fighting, but Lord of God, you know, at the end of the day, oh God of Father, we come to the right place of God, we come to our refuge, oh God of Father, for we know we always find refuge, oh Father, in thy ways, and in thee, Lord of God, we always put our trust, oh God, my dear Heavenly Father, we pray this, you know, God, as you commit, Lord of Father, the song says in your hands, Lord, we pray that, dear God of Father, you come and anoint this place, oh God, that at the end of the day, the glory and the honor will come to you, oh Father, we pray that, dear Lord of Father, Lord, we accept, oh Father, Lord, our praise, oh Father, Lord of God, for we have nothing more to offer to thee, O God, but dear Lord, we come to say thank you, Father. We have saved us, O Father, Lord of God. As we look forward to that day, O God, where we shall offer the meet you, O God of Father. It shall be a glorious day, O Father. We do pray that, Lord of Father, we will come this evening, O God, and speak unto us, O Father, Lord, and speak unto our hearts, Lord of God, and speak unto every one of us, Lord of God. We have different needs, O God of Father. Some need healing, O Father, Lord. We are grateful for the sick, O Father, Lord. Some need of salvation of their relatives, O Father, Lord. We are Bless each and every one of us, O God. Some are in need of the Lord of God. Of financial breakthrough for the Lord. My Lord, in the same way, I pray that you're going. May you touch every aspect of our Lord. May you touch every heart desire, O God of Father. May you touch over every aspect of our Lord. And we know that you're going to Father. If you can speak unto us, O Father, you shall be light and light eternal, O God. We will meet Lord of Father this evening, O God. The preacher in the hands of Father. May you have made more, God of Father, for you the glory of the Lord of God. For we know that your Father, you didn't come, Lord of God, to hear words of men, O God. For we know that the men speak, O God, shall bring death. But Lord of Father, you can speak unto us, O God. You shall be light and light forever, O God. We pray that you, Father, Lord, May you open our eyes and our ears, O oh God, for us to receive, O oh God of Father, the way that you prepared for us for this day. We pray that you will be blessed, O oh Father, the tithes and offerings that we brought to you, O oh God. We commit them with your hands. May you help us, Lord, Father, Lord, that everything, O oh God, will be done, O oh God of Father, for the fairness of your gospel. We thank you, Father, for this into your hands. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Amen.
We are your brother Shalom. There he is. Let's give him a round of applause. And, uh, God bless you. Welcome, my brother, to be in the house of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Um, we just want, I was going to be not preaching tonight, but around quarter to six, brother Jumelo Munyagi, the one that I want to tell him to come and preach for us. He just phoned to say that he is, um, uh, the daughter was not breathing, so they had to take the daughter um, for some oxygen pump, so the daughter is not feeling well, and they had to drive through to four ways for him. For the, for the admission of the daughter in the hospital. So I want us to remember Brother Jumelo Munyai and uh, pray for me as well because it felt me a little bit off that I was not prepared to come and minister for us, but I believe everything has a time and a purpose. Amen. Amen. God is, knows what he is doing. Amen. So we'll just remember Brother Jumelo's um, daughter. What's her name? Is there anybody that knows their, their name? All right, no, it's fine. That will remember him in prayer. And um, uh, it, this one is a good thing, and uh, they didn't even ask me to come and say it, but I'm going to say it. Uh, you know, when God does something good, we don't have to hide it. We always have to come back and give him the glory for what he has done. Uh, Brother Jethro Johnson was blessed with a new job. that makes me excited Amen. that we are stepping into execution yeah. we implement what needs to be implemented yeah. so God bless our brother we pray that God will open more doors for him and bless him abundantly yeah. now there's something that touched my heart as well Sunday after church you see where we park our cars under I mean downstairs when all of you was gone there was this man security guard behind the wall who is a um, um, working uh, for Cree. So I think he started by talking to Sister Kenele, Brother Alpha, then I went there myself, and then that security guard had some money that he wrapped uh, in a paper and wrote his name. And then he said, I'm enjoying what you people are preaching yeah. from upstairs. And uh, I know exactly what time you come to church. You have got service on Wednesday, so I just lean towards the wall to listen. Amen. And every Sunday, I lean towards the wall to listen. Then he says, this, this little money, I think it was about 20 rand or 30 rand, he says, this is my little offering to the Church of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when you see somebody like that and you ask us to pray for him, remember him in prayer. And uh, like Pastor Madiwa said, he said, when you are a pastor, you're not the pastor of this church, you're a pastor Amen. of the community. Amen. So I'm his pastor as well. Yeah. So to those of you that have got a privilege to come to the house of the Lord, don't take it for granted. Amen. Somebody is listening to the service right now through the wall. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Mighty God and eternal heaven, Father, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are indeed grateful in our hearts for this day that you have granted unto us. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you, O oh God, for this message that you have so ably unveiled in our generation. We are so thankful, O oh God, to understand who we are, where we come from, and where we are going, O oh God. Father God, we are so thankful, O oh God, for Brother Jethro's job that you've granted unto him. We are just coming back, clapping our hands to say, Thank you, Father. May you bless our brother. May you bless his coming in and his going out. We have realized that the administration of the way here is not for nothing, it's not for naught. You are taking your people into higher heights. As we have said this year, it's a year of implementation. Father God, may you take our brother, may he grow materially, physically, spiritually, and financially, I pray. Be with him today and his family. Lord, we want to remember, brother, to his daughter, oh God, that is on a ventilator right now. We raise our hand as the church of the living God, sending the angel of the Lord right at the hospital where the young daughter is, oh God. We say, Satan, remove off your dirty hands of the child of God. She is not your property, but she is God's property. We pronounce her well for the glory of God. We want to hear a good report tomorrow that all 
as well. We Father God, want to pray for the security guard just behind the wall of God. Listening, oh God, every time we have service here. May you bless him abundantly. You know his heart's desire, Father. I pray that you bless him, oh God. Father God, give him, give him a better job that he can come to the house of the Lord. I pray right now in the name that is above every name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe with you all things are possible. Father, we thank you. For all these things we commit them, Father, into your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. amen. If you have your Bibles with you, let us go straight to the administration of the word. Amen. We read in the book of John, chapter 14. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Little did I know that yesterday I came and spent some time here, I think from uh, 3 o'clock until 9 o'clock in the evening. Maybe God knew what was coming. So there's just, I'm not done with my series, but this sermon is not part of the series of Let Us Run. So this is just something that God just laid on my heart. John chapter 14, we read verses 12 to 14, and we'll read Mark 11, 22 to 23. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever he ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he ask anything in my name, I will do it. Mm. If he ask anything in my name tonight, I will do it. Believe us thou this tonight. Mark 11, 22. And Jesus answering said unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and he shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. For a title today, I want to speak on the manifestation of the third pool. Amen. And let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord God Almighty, we have read what we believe to be your word. It is easy, O oh God, for every healthy man to turn the pages of the Bible, but it takes you and you alone, O oh God, to turn the pages of our hearts. Lord, may you come and speak through me and give me favor before your people, O oh God, tonight. Father God, may you grant the desires of each and every one that is in the building tonight, each and every one that will listen to this service after a while, O oh God. Father God, may it be a blessing to them, I pray. Father God, we look to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, we, we thank God in our time that God has sent a prophet. Allow me to take my jacket. We thank God in our generation that God has sent us a prophet. And um, that prophet that God has sent is the fulfillment of the scriptures according to Zechariah 14, 7, according to Malachi 4, verse 5, and according to verse 4, 5, and 6, and Luke 17, 30, Revelation 10, 7. We all know that all those scriptures are pertaining to the dispensational prophet in our time. And Brother Brenham gave him, I mean, God gave him a ministry that consisted of three pools. Now, I want you to understand right at the beginning of the service tonight that the word pools are not scriptural words. Yeah. You don't find the word pool written in black and white in the Bible. But that word a pool, it refers to a different meaning. There are certain words that are not written in black and white, but they've got a certain meaning to believers. Like the word rapture is not a biblical word. It's not written in black and white. But it conveys the same meaning as catching away. Find in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain, brother Alpha, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So that word shall be caught up refers to the same word as the word rapture. The word millennium is not a scriptural word, 
Millennium comes from the Latin word called millennium, which conveys the same meaning as a thousand years. Now, from the scripture, we find it in the book of Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second day has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, if you underline that word, shall reign with him a thousand years, it conveys the same meaning as the word millennium. And also the word pool is not a scriptural word. But then we read in the scriptures, we find the meaning of the word pool. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 44, the Bible says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. John chapter 12, verse 32. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. So the word draw conveys the same meaning as the word poo. So the prophet taught us that every ministry that God sends to the earth consisted of three pools. If you go back in the Old Testament, you will find that Noah's ministry consisted of three pools. Moses' ministry consisted of three pools. Then you come to the New Testament. Jesus' ministry consisted of three pools. And to bring the continuity of the way in our generation, Malachi 4's ministry consisted of three pools. Now, now I'm in the message of the hour tonight. The prophet says in souls that are in prison now, he says Noah had three pools. And his third pool was to the lost after the door was shut. For God let it sit right there where nobody could enter or go out. They were inside. In code number two, he says, now coming from the Old Testament, going into the New Testament, he says, Jesus' ministry consisted of how many pools? Three pools. Did you know that? Notice and be sincere. If you ever was in your life, now for a minute, few minutes, his first pool was healing the sick. He became a very popular man. Now, Jesus in the first pool of his ministry, everybody liked him, everybody followed him, everybody invited him to his church, everybody believed him, seemed like, is that right? When he went forth healing the sick, everybody wanted him in their church, paragraph 271, but one day he turned around and started prophesying, for he was the word, and he was the prophet that Moses spoke of. When he went to tell them and tell them how they were living and the things that they were doing, he became very unpopular. That was his second pool. Yeah. Paragraph 279, then he says, but his third pool was when he preached to the lost that, that couldn't be saved no more. They were down there where the big painted eyes all oh, preached to the souls in hell and did not accept mercy, but were eternally separated from the presence of God. But yet they had to recognize it what he was because God made him the, God made him there. So every ministry, according to these previous two quotations, God in every time when he sends a ministry to the earth, that ministry consists of three pools or three stages. Now the reason God sends a ministry on the earth, Sister Paulina, that consists of three pools, was to let us know that the second pool must be greater than the first pool. Amen. Are we together tonight? And the third pool must be greater than the second pool and the first pool. So the third pool is the greatest of all the pools. The third pool is the final pool. The third pool is the climax pool. Now, if the third pool it is the greatest pool or the final pool, our focus cannot be on the lesser pools. Now, now, somebody help me preach here. Now, if the third pool it is the greatest pool, our emphasis cannot be on the lesser pools. We cannot emphasize on the first pool and the second pool. Our emphasis today as the bride of the living God it is the third pool. Is that right? So the three pools were showing the progression of the prophet's ministry. So the bride should progress with the revelation of progression. We can stay in the same place. We cannot always lie, lie around prayer lines and discernment lines. Oh no, brother, there's a revival there. Come to our tent. There's a prophet that came in the area. This is not time for it. I am sorry. I'm not called to take meetings and revivals. I'm called to the revealed word of the day. We will do prayer lines when God permits. But that is not the era. That is not the dispensation. Amen. Go read Matthew 24, 24. He says, even if 
if I call you, he says, don't go there. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. He says, Lord Christ is this side. Lord, this one is this side. He says, don't go there. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are not called for such. We are called to the revealed word of the day. We must be moving away from the evangelistic beats and coming to the revelation of the Son of Man. We should be coming to the open book ministry. We should be coming to rapture in faith. Hallelujah. Now, we want to see a beautiful progression of revelation from Genesis 12 to 13. When God says to Father Abraham, Genesis 12, verse 1, stay with me, I know where I'm going. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Now that is the first food. Is that right? Yeah. Secondly, let's go into Genesis 13, 15. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So he is moving from showing the land to what? To giving the land. Because there must be a progression of revelation. But having the land is not enough. Genesis 13, 17. Arise and walk through the land. In the length of it and in the breadth of it. For I will give it unto thee. So he is moving from showing the land. Giving the land. Now he says in Genesis 13, 17. Make footprints. Oh glory to God. Start to walk around the land. Make a mark. Set the territory around what you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, why, why is three? Three is God's number of perfection. Because we have realized that God works in the numbers of numerology. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, the prophet of God says, three room house. You yourself are abiding in a three room house. You are a soul, body, and spirit. You are three compartments. God dwells in three. God is perfected in three. The church is perfected in three. The mathematics of the Bible does not fail. The servants in worship and the 24th, in temptation and the 40s, in the jubilees and 50s. The mathematics of the Bible run perfect. God is perfect in three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost make one perfect God. Three offices of the same God. So the prophet of God teaches us that the mathematics of the Bible does not fail. So every number has got a significant meaning to it. Is that right? But our focus today is on number three. I know you know these things. Now, we know that three is God's number of perfection. Now, if you want to tie perfection, you must use three. That is why Brother Brennan comes and teaches us that before the word was a word, it was first the Logos. It was first a thought. Hallelujah. Then from a thought, then it becomes a word. That is in the second stage. But that is not enough. It must move from being the word to the word made manifest. Because when you want to tie perfection, you must use three. We have got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. We have got God above us, God with us, and God in us. We have got Romans chapter 5, which is our justification scripture. Romans chapter 6, our sanctification scripture. Romans chapter 7, the invisible union. Because if you want to tie perfection, you must use three. When God showed Moses how the tabernacle must be built, it has to have three courts. It has to have the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. When we come to the communion table, we must have the bread, we must have the wine, we must wash our feet. Then the Abraham comes and says, what was in God was put into Christ. What was in Christ was put into the church. If you want to tie perfection, you're going to use three. Does not fail. We have got the Old Testament written by Moses by the pillar of fire. We have got the New Testament written by Paul by the pillar of fire. In the end time, we have got William Brennan not coming to write the New Testament, but with the same pillar of fire to interpret both the Old and the New Testament. Hallelujah. Your body is an unbeliever, your spirit is a made believer, your soul is a believer. When we gather like this, like it or not, believe it or not, we have got the believers, the unbelievers, and the made believers. If you want to tie perfection, you must use three. And Brother Abraham comes in the message, cries the mystery of God revealed. He says, God had a threefold mystery secret. Not two, not five, three. Because the first thing was that God wanted to reveal himself to the people. The, the second one, he says, God wanted to have preeminence. Yeah. 
in the body of believers. Then thirdly, he wanted to restore the kingdom to its rightful position where Adam fell off. Hallelujah. And let me say to thee while I'm there, restoring the kingdom. When Adam fell, Adam in the Garden of Eden never lost the C63 AMG. Adam never lost the double story house. But Adam lost sonship. Adam lost Godship. And today, by the ministering of the word, with the end time message, we are restoring you back to your sonship. We are restoring you back to your Godship. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, in a similar manner, there are three stages to the prophet ministry. So we've got the first pool, the second pool, and the third pool. Now, the first pool is the healing of the body. Amen. Brother Graham will hold you by the hand and a vibration will come and he will tell you your sickness. Yeah. The second pool, he will be having discernment. God will give Brother Branham a database of everybody seated in the meeting. Yeah. He will tell you where you were and what you were doing. And you know, when it comes to the second pool, Brother Branham never missed. Yeah. 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 Because there, with coming to the second pool, there must not be a margin of error. Yeah. So if somebody comes in our generation and claims to be a prophet, and he designs 99% right and one wrong, we must lay hands on him. He has got a demon on him. Because Brother Abraham says, a gift must not have a margin of error. That is why Brother Abraham says, I would rather have love in a church than having gifts. That is why in this church, I emphasize that let's love one another. Let's stay with one another. Because even if a gift can come among us, it will not separate us. Because in the beginning was not a gift. And the gift was with God. And the gift was God. But in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Lord glory to God. Let us stay with the Word of God. Amen. Now here, one time, Sister Esther, Brother Brenham comes to the platform and he says to this brother, or maybe before that, this brother had fallen into adultery. And he comes and makes it right with the pastor and the deacons. And then Brother Brenham comes uh, and the brother makes it right, I think, publicly in front of the church, or Brother Brenham spoke on behalf of it. And then after he did that, Brother Brenham started preaching. It was the end of the sermon. When he was coming to the closing service, he says, that brother, the very one that confessed that very day, yeah. he says, brother, come and close the meeting in a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. And after the service, the deacons were waiting for Brother Brennan mm -hmm. to say, you cannot yeah. allow that brother to close in prayer. Mm -hmm. He just came back today, and Brother Brennan says, I'm sorry, brothers, when I was standing on the platform, I already saw him on the Amen. other side. Amen. Amen. That is why you need not to learn to not judge others. Yeah. Pray for others. Yeah. Then the prophet of God says, you believe that I'm able to do this through God. You believe. You have been to a doctor. Now, this is in the second pool. I see a man with his back turned to me. A doctor. Now, Brother Brennan will turn his back towards the audience. A doctor and he's examining you. And it's something in the throat. It's a condition in your throat. And it's a pocket over on on the side of your throat, where saliva goes into your throat, he is wanting to operate you, and you can't do it because the operation is too expensive for you, for the operation, and he tells you that it's dangerous if it moves over, and it's going to kill you, and take your life, is that true? Now, did you, did you hear me? That was my voice, it wasn't me speaking. No, 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 no. Now, if, you, if you're a message believer, you are reading between the lines. Here. He says, it was my voice, but it wasn't me speaking. Now, this is under the ministry of the second two. Where Brother Brennan has got a database of everybody seated in the audience. He says, brother, you are having a throat condition. And the doctor told you it is dangerous because it is already moving into other parts of the body. And the reason you cannot do it, it is because it is expensive. Yeah. Oh. But if you read this quotation a little bit downwards when you get home, you will realize that the prophet says, you are healed in Jesus' name. And he says to that man, you must come back to the tabernacle and give a testimony after three days. Yeah. 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 Now, ask me, where 
where is this man going to get the money? The help question is not for you. Yeah. Oh, glory yeah. Lord, Lord. The help question is not your responsibility. Yeah. Wait a moment, this, let me say, I don't know what is expensive for you. Yeah. It might not be the operation. Yeah. It might not be the operation. Yeah. It might be your desire that you want, but it is expensive. Yeah. I want to say, under this anointing, yeah. I give it to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he comes in the message perseverance. This message is loaded. Yeah. Hey man, I've been I've been taking quotations from this message. It, it's loaded. It is for everything. He says, I am a total stranger to the woman. I don't know her at all. Never seen her in my life. Are we strangers to one another, lady? If it is, raise up your hand. Wasn't that that you were praying for? If it was, wave your hand like that. Don't you see? Elohim. God, how can you doubt that? Can't you be persistent? No, 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 Sister Francina, tell me now, where was Elohim? Because on the platform, the man that turned to the back of the audience was William Brennan, was the son of Charles and the of Brennan. But he says, don't you see Elohim? I've got good news for you. Elohim was wearing a suit.
goes into the holy of holies. Amen. Amen. No, no, give me slide number one. No, the third pool is in a threefold man. Because that's where our emphasis is at. The first pool, it is the opening of the word, which is the revealing of the seals. Now the second pool is the tent vision, that little wooden building. People going into the little room, coming out different. Now, the third stage of the third pool, it is dynamic spoken word. Bringing back the supernatural. Are we together? With that in mind, let's go to quote number seven. Now remember, Satan will try to impersonate. He will try to impersonate everything that the church will do. He tried to do it. We notice through the Antichrist. But this is one thing he cannot impersonate. There will be no mimics to this. Because he don't know it. There's no way for him to know it. It's the third pool. He just knows nothing about it. See, he doesn't understand. Oh, church. The opening of the way was a total knockout punch to the enemy. Amen. The devil can copy the first pool. Yeah. I mean, these Pentecostal guys, when they lay hands and heal, it's not, it's not fake healing. Some of them is genuine healing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And some of these guys, when they design you, some of them, they're 100% the time. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But there is something that they cannot impersonate. Yeah. It is the ministration of the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. It, is, it is when you come to church. You know, the other day I was ministering here on a Wednesday night. If you remember, I greeted this brother. Stand up, my brother. I greeted this brother and I said to him, I give you your job in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me tell you the news now. He got a job. Yeah. I did not let him come him. The word was ministered. And when the word was ministered, it took care of his needs. When the word was ministered, Brother Jethro received his heart's desire. third day, but rose again on the eighth day. No. Now, Brother Brennan, now in the message Christ, the mystery of God revealed, <coughs> towards the end of the sermon, he says, I want to tell you a little secret, till I meet you again. Then he sings the song, take the name of Jesus with you, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Now, he says here, take the name of Jesus, not knowing, of course, being spiritual, you watch spiritual things, not knowing this, God knows it, but if you turn and look at the clock, it's on the door of two o'clock. The end of the second pool. Now this is in 1963. Yeah. The end of the second pool. Amen. The third pool is at hand. Amen. Then he says, did you notice the spirit? Take the same song and picking it up an octave higher than that. Amen. The next pool is at hand. If you've been following my preaching for some time, you know the word octave is one of my favorite in the message. Yeah. Octave, because it's a note on the eighth degree. We are at a new beginning. We are at a new dispensation. Yeah. We have left the seventh. Give me the next slide that I gave the other day. We have moved out of the seventh into the eighth. Yeah. And when you get to the eighth, you are coming back to the first. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. We are no longer at the first pool and the second pool. The brain has been picked up. Where are we at? We are at an octave high. We are here. The Pentecostals are here with the second pools and the first pools. Don't take us backwards. We want to go forward. Amen. 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 The revival today must be of the revealed way. And I know some of you, because we are Africans, you would like to be laid hands on. You will have to be touched. You will like to be told what you did last night. But how is it going to help you if I tell you what you ate for breakfast? You know what you ate for breakfast. Why would you want me to tell you what you ate for breakfast? You know it yourself. You know your surname, you know your name, you know your address. Why would you want in this generation for me to come to the pulpit and tell you what is your address? We have passed that stage. 
Come in your presence and where you stay. That era is over. But we are at a new season. We are at a new dispensation. Then when we come to the prophet, the word is the December. Oh, glory to God. You talk about something at home, and when the minister comes to the prophet, he speaks about the very same thing that you are talking about. Look, fellowship about something on Sunday. You come on a Wednesday night. The minister goes word by word. What is it? the Lord. Amen. We are not in the seventh, in the major seventh God, but we are at an octave sister Claudia. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are now called a little higher to dynamic spoken word. Amen. The beat has changed. Amen. Go and read the verse at Shalom. Brother Brennan says, the beat has changed. Yeah. He says, from symphony to sympathy. Yes, and all the time when I read yeah. that message, I thought Brother Brennan was making a grammatical mistake. Yeah. Instead of him saying sympathy, I thought he wanted to say symphony. Yeah. But if you go and check your dictionary, you will realize that it must move from a symphony to a sympathy. Yeah. Because it's going a little bit hard. Yeah. That's a subject for another day. Yeah. But we are called in a little higher. Yeah. Church, I love this message. This message is for answer to everything. Yeah. But other people, you know where they are? They are dancing from here. Even in the message. Yeah. They are dancing from the seventh major call. That is not the time for it. That is not the time for it. I'm sorry if I'm a better of a good news, but that is not the time for it. The, 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 even the change of transportation, it has moved. From here, it was, what was it? The, the, the monocar, the horse and buggy, the monocar, the aeroplane. But now, Brother Brennan says, when we reach here, we are at the zero hour. Yeah. Go and check it on your tablet. Just punch the zero hour. Yeah. That zero hour was mentioned in the message, the countdown. Yeah. What is the zero yeah. hour? We are moving from the airplane into the astronaut. Yeah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you are in an astronaut, you are not disturbed. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like preaching tonight. Yeah. Yeah. But let me try to hold myself so that I finish quicker. Now, Code number nine, he says, are you sure you don't want to come? No, Brother Brennan is calling an altar call. He says, those little children, young men, making confession, standing here, tears running down their cheek, out of rock and roll parties and things. That's what God wants to see. That's the purpose. The healing can wait just a minute. Now, I want to balance my message very well. The healing can just wait. Which is the healing of what? The flesh. He says, we want the healing of the soul. Yeah. Now, Brother Sipo, I rather you take me to the campaign yes, of the Lord. healing of the soul. Yeah. Yeah. If you get healed of your body, possibly if you live long enough, you will get sick again. Yeah. But if you're ever healed of your soul, yeah. you will never be sick again. Yeah. The healing of the soul is greater than the healing of the body. Because the healing of the body is a temporal healing. But the healing of the soul is eternal. If you are healed of your soul, you will never get sick again. Even the healing of the body does not disturb you. Yes, you are sick in the body. But in your spirit, you are well. You are well. It depends. If you are asking me, how are you feeling? It depends at what level are you asking me from. Yeah. Yeah. I, am, I will tell you I'm not feeling well, yeah. but it depends at what level are you asking yes, me. Sir. If you're asking me about the body, I will tell you it's a bit weak. Yeah. But if you tell me about the spirit, I will tell you all is well. Yes, and the more I confess it, the more I confess it, then the body comes under subjection of what the spirit is telling the body. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we go a little bit deeper? Yes, the now symbolizes the third pool by the king soul, mm -hmm. not a king soul. Yes. And you cannot take the king sword into a man's hand unless he has to reveal the son of man. Yes. Now, William Brennan was a son of man, revealing this son of man. Yes. Who was a son of man? Was Malachi 4. Yes. Who is this son of man? It is Jesus Christ. And that's when you hear Brother Brennan in the message, the stature of a perfect man. He says, I am not here to build an organization. I am not here to build a denomination. But I am here to build our houses. Come to church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now he 
meat I came symbolizes the first food with little bits. Little bits. The second food with bigger bits. But when we come to the third food, he symbolizes it with seven angels coming from each other. No, this is the third food. And when did it happen? In 1963. Yeah. And remember, this was uh, this picture was published in Life magazine on the 17th of May, 1963. But it was taken a picture on the 28th of February, 1963. Yeah. Then Brother Brennan, when he preaches the seventh seal, the other six seals he was saying, what was the first seal? The second seal. He was revealing them. But when he comes to the seventh, he says, I feel checked. I'm not going to say much about it. Yeah. And then he keeps quiet. And you know when was the seventh thing told to us in the message Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Yeah. 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 And that message was preached on the 28th of July. Yeah. No accident with the message. And 28 is a number of life. Life to who? To the blood. Yeah. 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 Then he says, now, as the third food is when headship is coming down. To connect with the body. Amen. That is why on Mount Sunset you don't see the body. You see what? You see the head. When you take your passport of your ID or anything, we don't pose the whole body now. They want your head because the head reveals the body. And when it came down on Mount Sunset, it was the head that was coming. But where was the body? The body was on the earth at the time of his coming. Oh, glory to God. And the two brother Ezra in 1963, they have dovetailed. Yes. And brother Brennan comes and gives us an example of the Chinese when they came to America, when they had laundries in America, they did not know how to write. But brother Brennan says they will cheer a paper a certain way. Yes. And they will give you half and they will remain with half. Yes. When you come and collect your laundry, you bring half and their half with your half must dovetail. Yes. And I want to say in 1963, when the head ship returned, The scientists wanted me to explain to me that picture. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to explain the picture for them. Yeah. And Brother Brennan said, he said, this is not for you. Amen. This is not for them. Oh, no. It's not for you, but it's for the bride. Yeah. Do you know that the people that believed the message in 1966, they did not understand what we understand now? Yeah. 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 They did not understand that that cloud was Christ coming down. Yeah. We are a part of him. Yeah. We, we are married to Christ yeah. with no language of divorce. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he comes to the church and he says, did you look at that picture right? He says, tell the picture. Yeah. In another message after he says, tell the picture, he says, if you've got a situation, tell your situation. Yeah. 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 to the right and it's, he does not say it's seven angels coming at that time yeah. Yeah. in 1963 yeah. he did not proclaim this as seven angels coming from eternity but the terminology is it is your law yeah. up there yeah. and notice that Christ himself the seven sea no because the coming of the law it is the seven sea yeah. Now, what I'm preaching, I'm not preaching to chickens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm preaching, I'm preaching to eat. Yeah. 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 Now, when he comes, he resides in you. Yeah. It is no longer God above us. It's no longer God with us. But it is God yeah. in us. Yeah. And what, who is God within us? It is Christ, the hope of glory. Yeah. 
That's why we say today, we are not alone. There is a man here that can turn on the light. A greater than all of them is here. Praise the name of the Lord. No, the three bulls are not there to push you. The three bulls are there to pull you. The, the explanation here it says, brother, also, push is to exert pressure upon an object or person to move it away. That's the word push. But the word pull is to exert pressure upon an object or person to pull it to oneself. That is what, the message of the hour, Sister Grace, it has got a tremendous pulling power. Some of you didn't want to come to the message. Some of you, you turned your back to the message. But this message had a great tremendous pulling power. It pulled you out by an irresistible force. Even if you didn't want to come, it pulled you any anyhow. And let me tell you today, God has placed you on an irreversible course. He pulled you by an irresistible course, put you on an irreversible course. There is no way you can go back. Even if you want to leave the message, God will do two things about you if you are a chief of God. You know what he will do? He will bring you home here and you make it right. Or he will take you home before your time. Because God does not lose one of his seats. Now let me declare to you quickly. The word pool is not a language for the charismatic church. You only hear the word pool in the message. We are not bragging. We are not being braggadocious. We are just telling the truth. The word pool is a language for the bride. And let me declare to you quickly that the place I'm preaching from tonight is not the push pit. It is the pool pit. That is what in the season of implementation I want you to pull whatever you want. That's the way it's going for. Amen. Amen. Pull whatever you want. Don't wait till the next service. Don't make promises you cannot keep. This is your time. Make every service a special service. The enemy says we can have an revival in every service. Church of the living God, let us never let the, 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 the season of revival die. Let us create a revival. Wherever you are, create a revival. Don't tell me about blessing. Church is boring. Church is not boring. You are boring. Create an atmosphere around you. Like an amateur God can create with a positive attitude. Amen. Amen. Then in 1946, the angel of God, I'm reversing a little bit backwards, but I'll come back. Now, Brother Obed, in 1946, the angel of the Lord told Brother Brennan that you will be given two signs, as it was given Moses. And in 1956, ten years later, the same angel appeared to the prophet to change the terminology from signs to fools. Yeah. Then I'm going to read you a quote from Voice magazine. It says here, I saw clear water. Now, this is the vision of Brother Brennan. I saw clear water and rainbow trucks. And the lake extremely large and stood hundreds and hundreds of ministers around the lake catching fish. And I said in my heart, I'm as good fisher as they are, or even better. And I want to catch that fish, the large one. I want you to catch the rainbow trout. Now, Brother Brennan at the lake, his eyes was not upon the little fish, Brother Tatel, but his eyes were set upon the rainbow trout. What is the rainbow trout? It's a fish that has got seven colors. Yes. And, a, and, and a rainbow signifies a covenant. Yeah. Amen. 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 Is it right? Amen. Now, a rainbow again is half a circle. That's why when the mighty angel of Revelation said, came down, there was a rainbow above his head. Meaning, he, when he came down, he had half. When he came down, he had half. The other half was on the earth, and the two house must have dead. What was it? We are the matching piece to the masterpiece. We are the identified piece to the masterpiece. You're right. Now, at the lake, Brother Brown, what did you see? Give me the next slide. Now, the fishermen at the lake were representing the ministers, the fivefold ministry. Now, the small fishes are the denominational 
babies. Yeah. The rainbow trout, it is the bride. Yeah. Now in the vision, Brother Bram says, I will catch that fish. Yeah. Meaning what? The rainbow trout, yeah. which is what? The bride. Yeah. But the angel said to Brother Brenham, no, you're not going to catch it. I will teach you. Yeah. Yeah. This is not by might, Brother Jethro. This is not by power. I will teach you how to catch that fish. Because the rainbow trout does not catch any hook. Somebody didn't hear me. The rainbow trout does not catch any hook. Now, if the angel taught Brother Brennan how to catch that fish, the same angel must teach us as ministers yeah. how to catch that fish. Yeah. 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 Must teach us how to catch that fish. Yeah. Yeah. Because why? God anoints Malachi 4. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Malachi 4 anoints Ephesians 4.11, yeah. which is the fivefold ministry. Yeah. And Ephesians 4.11 takes you to Ephesians 4. Come up hither, and I will show you things which will come here after. Yeah. You cannot come up hither when you stay at home and listen to a tape. Yeah. This will emphasize until the rapture. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot sit at home and say, I want to listen to a tape. You must have a home church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some of these people in the tribulation, it will be them and their tapes. Yeah. Because that is not God's order. Yeah. Have you seen people that listen to tapes, if you meet them 10 years down the line, they don't grow. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are certain things that they cannot listen to. People that sit at home and say they listen to tapes, ask them if they've listened to Jezebel religion. Because their names are painted. They've got makeups. I will preach whether you're saying amen or not. Maybe one day I must preach on Jezebel religion. Because every time I'm addressing this, aliens are going around. Now, I will teach you how to fish. Now, remember, in the New Testament, Peter fished the whole night. And Peter caught nothing. Until the same angel said to Peter, throw your net into the deep. And Peter, when he threw the net into the deep, when he pulled the net, he was staggering. And I want to tell you, the rainbow saw loves it in the deep. Amen. Oh, praise God. We appreciate the shallow part of the ministry. We love them, but we want it as well in the deep. Now, I don't know whether I will finish or not. Give me some few minutes. Now, the first pool was, let's say, as the Lord. Let's say, as the Lord, you are healed. The second pool, sister, you have been there and there. Let's say, as the Lord, you are healed. But when it comes to the third pool, the Lord changes. It is no longer that say as the Lord. This little fishing, I give you back your life. It, it moves from that say as the Lord to the personal pronoun. I give you your children. Don't go back to where you come from. Sister Hetty, I give you your children. Before the doctors come, let the tumor be gone. Amen. And now I want to say, those manifestations of the third pool was Mark 11, 23. John 14, 12. The scriptures that we have read. This is not Mark 16. This is not James 5. Calling the elders of the church to lay hands and anoint you with God. Can I tell you that things have changed? <laughs> and other people are remaining behind. If you send me a text on WhatsApp and you tell me I must pray for it. When you see me, when you see blue tick, Exactly. Not those that hide. Blue tick. <laughs> then you must know that I have already, your desire has already been granted. Ah, somebody is not here. Somebody, somebody is not here. Your friends have get your message. And sometimes, you know, I, I've seen many a times some of you send me requests and some things come in between me and your request. And you know what? I just speak. It in the name of Jesus Christ. And a few minutes later, you send me back a text and you say, Pastor, I'm so thankful for your prayer. But sometimes let me tell you, I didn't pray. I looked at it and I pronounced a blessing. We are in the season of the dead pool. Don't take us backwards. Oh, I feel somebody saying, but for a blessing, 
looks like you are against the first pool and the second pool. Uh-huh. We'll do that when God permits. Yeah. Don't you hear when Jesus says greater works yeah. than this? Yeah. Jesus did works, not greater works. Yeah. Greater works were left for us. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me show you. Jesus multiplied the fish and the bread that was there. Jesus did not speak the fish and the bread. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Jesus did not create the fish and the bread. Adam could create, but Adam in the Garden of Eden did not create. But in our generation, God sent. that I took a decision from 2021. Mm. So read all the messages Amen. from 1947 mm. until 1965. Amen. And by the grace of God, I have managed to read all the messages. Amen. Amen. And Brother Brennan says, when he spoke the word, God himself, he says, he believed no, can you imagine? I'm giving the creator of heaven. He had to believe his own word. And I want to tell you, as you're stepping into an implementation, believe what you say. Don't put it on God. Don't doubt it. And secondly, remove negative people around you. Remove negativity. You're not going to go anywhere with negative people around you. You must believe what you have said. Amen. That's why when he says, let there be, Amen. earth had to respond Amen. and follow the instruction Amen. of the spoken word. Amen. That's why Jesus says, if you say to this mountain and don't doubt in your heart, the mountain must move. Amen. Because the mountain was framed by the word of God. Amen. Because earth, church, I like this one. Recognizes the spoken word. If you don't know what to write on your status, you can go and write this. Earth has got a mechanism for the spoken word. Amen. Amen. It has got ears for the spoken word. Earth has got ears for the dead pool. (laughs) Now, Earth doesn't hear first pool and second pool. It does when God wants it to. But the greatest thing that earth responds to is the spoken word. When Moses was at the Red Sea, the Red Sea was part of what? And when Moses cried, God said to him, Why criest thou unto me? Speak and go forth. And the earth had to respond to the spoken word. Now, therefore, tonight, you can speak to your earth. 
If your problem is in heaven, don't worry, it is sorted. But if your problem is on earth, the solution to that problem is you. Earth must say amen. When the Son of God is speaking. Don't marvel to me. Don't complain. I preached the message many years ago. Why can't I speak the third pool? Is it? Why do you cry? Tonight you can speak what you want. Because we are at the dispensation of the third pool. But also because of time, I'm going to jump a few scriptures there. But I'm going to come to this one. Here is my favorite quotation. Code number 11. Jump the two scriptures and come to this one. Here, a few days ago, I was going to preach there on a Sunday. Last week it was. A week from last Sunday. They brought a little girl there on a stretch. Skip that one. Yeah, that's fine. The girl can, they said the girl cannot leave. The cancer was so bad. About 17 years old. She can't even get there. She's going to die before she gets there. It was a pitiful case. A little, a little lovely little child of 17 years old. Now, I want us to read this quotation in remembrance of Brother Tumelo's daughter that is on an oxygen pump. Is that right? It's a pitiful case. But watch. We are not going to put hands on Brother Tumelo's child. And then he says, to prove something to my church. I never touched the child at all. I never as much as touched her. I walked in late when I stretched her because there was other sick people, but I was concerned about the child to catch her spirit when I spoke to her. And she seemed like a very fine little girl. I see no reason why that child should feel a premature grave. That has to be the devil trying to take her life. So I never touched the child at all. I went to the pulpit with the word and stayed right with the word. And the word healed her instantly yeah. until she got up and walked away. It's all right now, living like anybody else. Can't find a trace of it anywhere. Never touch the girl. See, the word, the next one, went forth. And she believed the word. And the word is God's life and God's power. The word is what does it. The word heals the sick. Yeah. No, we, with the third pool, we become spiritual snipers. By the ministering of the word. The word can defeat the devil anytime, anywhere, under any condition. No sickness can send this blessing. Hallelujah. To prove something to this church, we are not going to touch you at all. We will come to the pulpit every Sunday with the word. Every Wednesday with the word. And the word must heal you. This message of power is unlimited. The unlimited power is residing in the tapes. Now here is a quote to those of you that like the, third, the, the, the first pool and the second pool. Now, can't you see that you can't put your trust in healing campaign? Now I'm going to read it again. Can't you see that you can't put your trust in healing campaigns? Oh brother, so and so is coming in the area. He's going to lay hands on us. Can't put your trust in healing campaigns. Amen. You can't put your trust in any kind of sign like that. The only thing that you can put your trust in is thus says the Lord. Amen. From the Bible. Church, now listen to what he says. That is where I have tried to keep you, my children. And if something happens to me, if I die, and God takes me out of this earth, don't you never fail to me. And God takes me out of this earth. Don't you never fail. Remember this with all your heart. Stay with that word. Don't you leave that word. Anything contrary, leave it alone. No matter what it is. Church, we cannot put our trust in healing campaigns. Let's stay with that word. In another message, he says, the predestinated will always stay with that word. Not with the church. Not with the campaign, not with the brotherhood, but the word. Amen. 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 Oh my. How many give me five minutes? Amen. Amen. I say, how many give me five minutes? Amen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty times five. Now, let me skip a little things here, Brother Alpha, because of time. Now, you know, as spiritual scientists, we stay on the says the Lord. We stand on the promises of God. 
When God says so, we believe it. We don't doubt. Let's read the code 13 and 14. Now, brother, sister, you you can call me a fanatic, you can call me a fanatic if you want. But I know that there is power of God. First thing, because God said so. Second thing, because in my heart there is something in there that says that there is a power of God to heal every sickness. I believe it. And as long as I believe that, I'll spend my life that I know that it is the truth. And he says in God commissioning Moses, show we are going to take over. I like this part. Amen. Church, this year we are taking over. Amen. Amen. I have 40% of amen. I am saying we are taking over. In every sphere of our life, we are taking over. We are defying the enemy and all his six. We are taking over. That's right. Just as long as God says so. Amen. That settles it. When God says so, let everything be what it can be. When God says so, that settles it. Let me declare to you tonight, your situation is life. Under this ministry, your situation is life. And I want to say to you, don't observe the lying vanities of the devil. Because those that observe the lying vanities don't obtain favor from God. I want to say to die tonight, say something very simple. Brother Adam, in every service, he will say, Satan, I want to remind you who I am and who are you. You are nothing but a bluff. But we are sons and daughters of God. Somebody say, this is my path. This is my hour. This is my season. And I want to say to you, change is here. You do something to cause something to follow. Give me an expectation. In implementation, in execution, you don't stop. You must move from your current status to your what? Come on, church. You are moving from your current status to your. So for you to move, you must do something to follow it. If you don't speak, nothing happens. If you don't speak, nothing happens. Amen. 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 Do you know that these people in our generation, they discover laws. Amen. But these things are the law of God. Yeah. Amen. Isaac Newton discovered the law of motion. Amen. Then he says the body will continue in a state of rest unless acted otherwise by a disrupting force. You know, these guys, they, they, they knew yeah. that for you to get somewhere, you're going to disrupt some things. You're going to challenge some things. You, you, you're going to wake up when everybody is sleeping. Then he says in the third law of Moses, to every action, brother Ezra, there is an equal opposite reaction. The energy you give in is the energy you get back. testimonies. You know, this boy, brother, he comes, he is born with a half leg, with crutches. Yeah. But he goes to the shop yeah. Yeah, to go and buy a size 7. Yeah. And he doesn't buy one, he buys two. Yeah. How did he know that when the feet is going to, when the food is going to grow, it is going to grow to a size 7. Yeah. 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 But you got to do something yeah. to cause something. Boy, what do you want? 
Amen. 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 These shoes, I'm not going with them home. Amen. I want them to be on my feet. Amen. And brother ran and prayed. And the feet grew Amen. according to the desire Amen. of his God. Hallelujah. And he will be home. The box of shoes was left at the podium. And the crutches were left at the podium. He went walking home being free. I don't know who is going home free tonight. But there is somebody here tonight that is saying, I'm going home free. Power in what you say. Step into execution. Implement what you want. Matthew 11, 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, yeah. and the violence they take it by force. Amen. Now, church, this is not time to negotiate with the devil. The violent must take it by force. Yeah. Do I have violent people in here? Yeah. I want to ask again, do I have violent people here? Yeah. I want to ask one more time, do I have violent people in here? Don't sit back, be violent in what you stand for. This can be the first day of your life. As I am preaching now, whatever you are, serve the devil in what is. Tell the devil we are not under the first group. We are not under the second group. I am not waiting for brother blessing to lay hands on me. Right where I am, Satan, I am speaking what I want. I am violent. I am coming to you, Satan, by force and by honor. Say amen, somebody. Be violent in what you stand for. And let me say, church, we must take worship to another level. Because certain things are going to happen when we do something. When we become violent, certain things begin to shake. He told Joshua one time, he told them, go around the walls of Jericho. And when you go the first time, don't, don't say anything. You can be formal, cold, and snatchy. But on the seventh move, you're going to shout. Then in Joshua chapter 6, verse 16, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpet. Who is the priest? The minister. Who is the priest today? Brother Blessing. And Brother Blessing said unto the people at original sin ministry, shout for the Lord.
omnipotent is yours as I stand in your midst. I have not come to give you, bring you fear and faith, but more than courage and ability. All power is given unto you to use. You speak the word and I will perform it. That is my covenant and it will never fail. The season is here. We have arrived. And there are in the dispensation of the festival. Blessed be your holy name. Give thanks with a worshiping song, Brother Phil, and I'm going to call Brother Chipeta to come and wrap up in prayer. Praise the name of the Lord, then after Brother Phil can dismiss us.
honor that you have given to us, Lord. Lord, we came, Lord, with a, and a great expectation to hear from you. And like all the other days, Lord, you kept your appointment. You've come, Lord, and exceeded our expectations, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the atmosphere that has been created by the ministration of the word. We can testify, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, that the environment has been created, Lord, where we can speak the way, oh dear God, to any situation that presents itself before us. We thank you, dear God, for the manifestation of the first pool, the second pool, but we know, Lord, that there is a dynamic spoken way under the third pool, Lord, under the revealed word of the hour. We believe, Lord, that this dynamic spoken word, Lord, will resolve each and every situation, will resolve each and every disease, Lord, we believe, oh dear God, under this atmosphere that has been created, we can speak the word and go forward and let it be manifested in our lives. For you spoke the word and you believed your own word. We believe the word. We, give, we believe each and everything that has been spoken, Lord. We want to take each and every situation tonight under control and bind the devil and bind every contrary spirit and to speak the word over it, oh dear God. We believe, Lord, as we step out of this sanctuary, we shall be elevated, Lord, with your own faith, oh dear God. We believe as we go, Heavenly Father, we will go, Lord, believing, dear God, that it's already done. We will go, Heavenly Father, with a deep-seated peace in our hearts to know that it's settled. To know, Lord, that we are the true sons and daughters of God and that there's nothing that can stand before us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the message of the hour. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the revealed word of the hour. We shall remain grateful to you. For your grace that you have extended to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For we are not sitting, Heavenly Father, on the seventh major court. This is an octave high. This is something that the devil knows nothing about, but something that has been revealed under the seventh seal to the bride, individually, personally, to our life. We can feel the pool, oh dear. We can feel that manifestation of the pool. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise you and we glorify you. Bless your servant, Lord, that has labored. We ask, Lord, that you will just replenish strength that's been lost. Bless his family. May each and every one of us pray for him, Lord. Just lift his hands, oh dear God. For we know, Lord, that the devil will try to destabilize the ministry. But we know, Heavenly Father, that everything is under control. Amen. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would just grant us traveling bases. May you protect us, Lord, may you send the angels to come around us. Till we shall meet again at Jesus' feet. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. This evening. Now, this message was simply this, this evening. See, God said so. Do you believe it? Yeah.